What is up, Nickel City Mafia? Welcome to another edition of Wednesday Night Bills Tailgate. You know, Jake and I were going to keep it local, but he said, you know what? He got a text from Timmy. Timmy has some hot takes, so we had to jump in the pickup, our chromed out pickup, and drive up to Maine. So um, it was kind of a long ride, but Timmy, we're here for you, man. And um, first of all, Jake, how you doing, sir? My co-host, Jake Podger, as always. How you doing, sir? Oh, I'm I'm fantastic, Mike. Just got back from the Erie County Fair. Shout out to them for giving me a heart attack, probably at the age of 50, (laughs) but it's all good. Hey, I got my lemonade here with like half a lemon in it. It's basically gone. Uh, I got my sponge, or not my sponge candy. I got my kettle corn. Sponge candy sounds really good, too. You might as well throw that in the mix. Uh, (laughs) Kettle corn, funnel cakes. uh, My my, The little one got a uh, chocolate-covered banana with rainbow sprinkles on it. I mean... You name it, it's there for food. Um, so I'm feeling great. You know, we walked it all off, but uh, probably more than doubled it after the fact. So I don't know. Here we are. Excited to talk some more Bills football, especially with Timmy Corks on tonight. Let's I go, know, baby. I know. We're, we're playing it back again with Timmy. I, I do want to go out to the comments here. And Tom's saying, that man cave, Jake, I'm moving in. Do you got, do you got oh, yeah, some? Oh, yeah, Tom, uh, come on down, man. Got some space? For people to stay there? A lot of space down here. And actually, we can count it as a bedroom, I think, because there's a big egress window to the left of me. So, yeah, I mean, we can make it work. <laughs> I love it. All right, well, Timmy, how you doing tonight, man? It's good to, good to have you on again. We had you on a t- couple weeks ago. Uh, Jake said you had a little podcast high, and now you're all about it. Now you're like, get me out on, <laughs> get me out on yeah. the air again, Jake. I have so much to say. So how you doing? And then why don't you give us, why don't you start us off with some of your, your takes this week, man? Oh man. Yeah, you, you guys want some Timmy takes this week. All right. Timmy so, takes, Timmy takes. Oh yeah. I know. I'm uh I'm doing great. You know, I had a long day today at, at the hospital, but you know, glad to be here. This is past an hour past my bedtime. So, you know, we're running <laughs> on fumes, but no, like Jake said, you know, I kind of hit that high on podcasting. So happy to be on here and then uh, let's get the show rolling, you know? Nice. Uh, so yeah, um, I guess the first take that I guess I have two, but the one take it's going to be, I don't think Khalil Shakir is going to be a lock to make this roster. You know, um, I don't don't think he's been consistent enough. Coming in blazing, I love it. <laughs> I know, Mike, you love him. I know a lot of people out there watching right now love him. Uh, so yeah, no, um, you know, I think it's the biggest thing, you know, consistency. He having the dropsies. You know, he's not. You know, he's not going to be all I'm hearing about. And even during the game, you know, he's been dropping the ball in the opportune times. And he's got a lot of competition going on. You know, the third string wide receiver is coming out and they're showing up too. And then you have the emergence of Andy Isabella trying to fit all these guys in the offense. You know, he wants some difference makers out there. And, you know, the team's always been looking for speed. So, um, you know, I know a lot of people are thinking right now he's a fifth round pick. And, um, from last year and they're still invested in him but hey i don't know i don't think he's a sure lock right now to make this roster so i'm ready to hear it back from some people right now so oh, let's hear well, it let me throw it to jake first because i gotta get my uh <laughs> wits about me after that take timmy's been poking with me with that take for like two weeks now and i have a hard time believing it although i do love andy isabella and i think his stock is on the rise a lot of people are like oh andy isabella i had three catches for 42 yards he had great burst I know he didn't do anything super special on the return side, but I don't know, man. I mean, consistency is key. Um, I, you know, Khalil, let's not get it twisted, though. He did have two nice catches in the game last week, but then the last play that he was out there, basically, it was a third down, crucial third down, needs to make a nice, easy catch, and just lost concentration on an easy one. So, you know, we've heard that that happens from time to time with him. It's like Dawson Knox, where he'll make these incredible catches. And then he'll drop the easiest of easy catches. So, I, uh, you know, I'm not ready to to abandon ship with him, but um, sure. I mean, put him on the hot seat, and you know what? It could be the best thing for him. I love Andy Isabella. I do hope he makes the team, even with Khalil Shakir. Maybe we keep seven. I don't know if there's a way to do so, but if there is, I don't think it's half a bad idea. I gotta ask Timmy, what's in the air out there in Maine um, this week? I don't know what's going on, but. There is no way Khalil Shakir does not make this team. I mean, look, Dawson Knox was a third round pick back in 2019. He's had the dropsies, right? They signed mm-hmm. him for a big contract, right? They re signed him. Khalil, Khalil, I got to get used to saying Khalil. 
I mean, you talked about it last time, Jay. Great route runner. People think he's small. He's not. He's six foot. He's almost 200 pounds. Yeah. And, yeah, he'll make those acrobatic catches. He'll make, I mean, all the time we see that, even in college. And the not coming out of college was, yeah, sometimes he loses concentration. But I'm not giving up on him. Come on. What did we see him last year? I don't think he had more than 30 snaps the whole year last year. Um, he, when he did get out there, he made some plays. There was a couple, one game at least, they had a, some big plays. I know he had a drop last year as well. Uh, we saw it in the preseason game. He makes these two great catches and then a nice little over the middle, wide open, hits him right in the hands, drop. Can't happen. I agree with you there, Timmy, but that's not enough. They're not going to cut him. Tell me why you think Isabella would make this squad over Khalil. I think it's just the big t- big play potential that they have out of him. Um, I'll kind of rele- relay it back to last year when it comes to our running backs. I absolutely hated Devin Singletary, and I did not like Zach Foss. I you were going to make Mike throw you off the show. I know. Snap. Mike, Mike is a big <laughs> fan of, of Devin Singletary, but let's be honest with you. Was there any – time where you think he's going to break a big one right now where he's going to come up big when you think back to james cook touchdown during the preseason game where it was just a simple eight yard run where he ran outside the tackle box and he made it to the end zone you never saw them single single singletary do that and that's kind of what i see in khalil shakir where he's kind of yeah he's going to be mr dependable he's going to come in bring you know his lunch pal and do whatever's ever told of him but he's not going to bring that big play potential. I don't. I just don't see that in him. What I see in a, what I see in Andy and Isabella is that potential to make big plays. Um, we haven't seen a lot of Deontay Hardy out there, so I'm not sure what he's bringing to the table right now. But we saw a lot from India, Andy Isabella last game, and I know I've heard a lot of things. He got caught by Baltimore earlier this preseason, and he's basically just living out on the streets until the Bills pick him up off of waivers, and um, you know. He's probably easier to make it to the practice squad than Khalil Shakir. But I just think with his speed, with his potential, if you can just dump the ball out, because what was the problem last year with the Bills? Was Josh Allen was throwing the ball way too deep. He's throwing it past 10 yards a lot. We need to get back to the shorter pass game, and you need those guys who are going to break tackles and get bigger yards after the catch. And that was one of the reasons the Bills were having issues last year. Not a lot of the receivers get yards after the catch. And you have a guy like Andy Isabella who has the potential to do that. You know, that's why I feel like he has a better chance to make the roster than maybe someone who like a Khalil Shakir. I'm not much of a stats guy. I don't know how Khalil Shakir's yards after the catch was, but I feel like Andy Isabella has a little bit more potential right now. Jake, well you, said. You agree with that? Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's very well said. Big play potential is there. This is a guy that I think his first career catch was like 70 something yards for the Cardinals for a touchdown. And I want to say he ended the season off his first year. He got injured his first year, too, and it, I think it was like two catches. I don't even know what the exact stats were, but his yards per catch were ridiculous. Um, so he's also a former second-round pick. So, I, you know, very highly touted coming out of UMass, put up absolute insane numbers coming out of there. And um, he is definitely a guy that I'm rooting for. I would love to see make this team. I think for him, his biggest challenge is first off staying healthy because he hasn't been able to do so. And then secondly, can he run the shorter, more intermediary routes, the similar, I guess, in a similar fashion to Cole Beasley? Like, is he just a deep guy or can he also work the short side of the field as well? Like, that's really, I, I think it's something that people have been waiting to happen with him and it just hasn't just yet. So, um, time will tell with that one. I still am rooting for Khalil Shakir as well, though, because this is a guy that we drafted. We thought we were getting a steal in the fifth round with. I still believe we got a steal with him. Uh, You saw towards the end of the season last year the impact that he made on this team. So I'm not ready to give up on him. But if we have to keep seven, I'm okay with that, too, because I think we only keep three running backs, to be honest with you. So last year we kept four because of Taiwan Jones. So maybe we add an extra receiver this year and keep seven. I will say that I have two Boise State alumni that would strongly disagree oh, yeah. with you, Timmy. Um, I have one of them was Jackson. He's actually on the AFC East Summit show. He was actually there for the trivia game, which was fantastic. By the way, if you haven't checked out the AFC East Summit, get on over and subscribe to that channel. You have a rep from every team. 
Jake. We got uh, Sean out there from the Red, White, and Bills. Brett. And um, it's fantastic. It's a great show. But Jackson went to Boise State, graduated from there. He was there, um, went to all the games the last year that uh, Khalil was at with the team. Speaks nothing but highly about him. And then Tony, who has graduated many, many years ago from Boise State, but keeps a close eye on them. Also, once we drafted him and just had nothing but good things to say. So I got the inside scoop on you, Timmy. I mean, these are guys that <laughs> went to that school, talked to people there. This guy is going to be a star in the making. And I want to bring up something that Sean said. I mean, if Shakira's going to get cut for a couple drops, why was Gabe on the roster last year? I mean, that, that's I mean, a good point. Let me throw that at you. And let me say this about Isabella, by the way. He's short. Here's what I don't like about these short guys over the middle, especially on these smaller routes. Big linemen get their hands up. Forces forces Josh to throw that ball a little high sometimes. Those five nine guys, eh, he better have a nice vertical leap. Is all I'm telling you. And who does? Six foot Khalil can go up and make those grabs. So I hear you, Timmy. I I always respect everyone's take, but you're hitting me hard today, man. You're hitting me tough. I mean, <laughs> right off the bat. What are you gonna tell me next? Cam Lewis isn't gonna make it now. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh no, he's making the team. No, he's making that team. No. Oh. Um. <laughs> No, um, like I said, we don't have a lot of tape on Khalil Shakir. Um, so he has to make as much of his uh, ability or he just has to make – he has to basically show himself with a, a little bit of opportunity that he does have, and he hasn't really shown enough. But I'm not saying that he's getting cut. I just don't think as many – as the Bills may be as high as some of us are. You know, I know he's a fifth-round pick. In the past, I never saw a fifth round pick as being like a high investment pick. To be totally honest with you, experts had him as a third rounder, Timmy. Yep, but he got to the fifth round though, so that shows it. I don't care what the experts say; the actual people who get paid picked him in the fifth round, so he did. That's drop. true. The uh, I will say this too: one of the biggest knocks on him was that he loses concentration, and that's why he slipped a little bit. And you know, I guess we have seen that continue over into his pro career a little bit. Um, you know. I think it's something he can get over, and it's something that Dawson Knox was able to get over. So why can't he? So I am, um, I'm pretty fired up, man. Yeah, he's probably talking to Knox's guy who throws him the the tennis balls and all that stuff. That they're gonna work through that, Timmy. You're gonna see. I think you'll see yeah. something a, a good bounce back. Why have to prove me wrong? I love the yeah. take. I love the take. I want to go back to the channel a little bit. Still, people talking about your your man cave. Sean says, "Is that where I'm sleeping, Jake?" When he comes up to visit. Sean, right over there, I still have to unpack some boxes, but on that other side, I'm going to have six TVs on that wall. i got to still frame this out. This is all insulation on the wall, so I haven't hung anything just yet. But we got the floor epoxied, and it looks fabulous. Let me tell you, Gorilla Garage, shout out to them. Sponsored us last year for a ticket giveaway. Going to see if we can make that happen again this year. And then we got the ceiling painted black, which looks so freaking good with the floor. It balances it out so well. But we got a couple couches back there. I'm going to have... My bourbon all set up along that wall. No, not a big drinker, Sean, but I will definitely be indulging in some of that. Um, you're going to have it made. I'll tell you what, come October, it's going to be, this place is going to be changed for the better, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> we got him saying, uh, Mike, you better be talking a lot today. You've been a star lately. Stop hiding. I've been on a few podcasts. I've been, you know, had Mafia Sports Report on our show, and then I went on his show. Um, it was fun. It was fun. But I'm not hiding. You know, I'm bringing the heat. But these young guns, I got to hear their takes because Timmy, we don't get Timmy on uh, an awful lot. So I'm letting him speak mostly today and <laughs> reacting to all his takes. I'm, I'm curious what else he's going to bring to me. Oh, my goodness. Um, he's a little sad. So, by the way, this is a good reminder. This is the last show to get into the Madden 24 giveaway. And all you got to do yep. uh, on this show or one of our past uh, shows, three, four shows, just go into the comments and put Madden. Put the word Madden. Try to be creative with it, but if all you want to do is put the word Madden, you're in. You're in. And we're giving away two Madden 24, the ultimate edition, this Sunday on our show, um, which is going to be 9 Eastern. So be there. And he says it's not being made for the Switch. That surprises me. I thought I thought Madden was on the switch, but bummer to hear that. Yeah, I'm surprised uh, about that too, actually. Interesting. And then huh. Tom, yep, we uh shall retire from the Bills. We'll we'll be talking about that in a little bit. Absolutely for sure. He's on the thumbnail. He's on the thumbnail, so you, you can be uh, rest assured we're gonna be talking about that. Let's see who else we got out there today. 
Yeah, Tom out there. Good to see you, Tom. And Sean, tell your wife I said thank you as well. She said, uh, Jake, my wife said her basement looks like a Bill's store. I got you on the that. big screen. He's got us on the big screen, Mike. How about that? Pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, all right, Timmy, back to you, buddy. What else you going to bring tonight, man? <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> Nothing crazy. Um, I just think there's going to trade that's going to happen before the end, before the start of the season. And I think it's either coming from the defensive line or the cornerback. I don't think there's too much depth on both those. I believe there's going to be a trade, especially now with what's going on with middle linebackers being yes. injured right now, as well as our offensive tackles. You know, we just had one basically set and pulled uh, Devontae Davis. Young man's game, too old for it, decided to leave. So <laughs> <laughs> if you ever have a Amazing chance to watch, uh, <laughs> to watch Trey White's interview, he was talking with Shady McCoy, and he was talking about that moment and his impression of Devontae Davis is the greatest thing I've ever Show seen in my game. life. Show man's game. <laughs> the way he does game. his voice. <laughs> oh, I die laughing every time. You have to watch. If, if you're out there listening, do yourself a favor. After the show, of course, go and uh, go just YouTube it. Just type in Trey White, Shady McCoy, Bonte Davis. It's the funniest thing. It's unbelievable. <laughs> um, Big L's out there. Big L, finally. Yeah, it. let's I thought, go. I texted him. I, I let him know we had a show tonight, so they're watching. I was curious if maybe you had upset him or something because he hasn't been around lately. He hasn't been, you know, popping in on the show saying hi. But there he is. Always good to see Big L, one of the biggest supporters of Nickel City Mafia since the beginning of the show. It's good to see He's getting Big uh, L. knee surgery tomorrow, by the way, Mike. Oh, He's going right, to get right. a uh, – well, so his – he got a double knee replacement, and his one knee is still kind of messed up. I think it actually cracked or something, the plate. So he's got to go get it redone. So he's doing that tomorrow. So he'll have plenty of time to watch more Nickel City right. Mafia. They they just got back from Alaska last week, too. So they've been traveling and living their best life lately. Sean's saying, Timmy, seeing you in a hoodie is making me sweat. <laughs> yeah, I got, oh, a little man, bit of, I, I, got, I got one of these little light yeah. hoodies, right? They, they just look good. Yeah, a little bit of swag <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah, Mike, you do look really good right now. I got to say, gray's a good color on you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Hell yeah. I've been working out ever since Timmy said he, he goes to the gym every morning. I said, I, I got to follow that work plan. So I love it. Let's go. Got to visit the Iron Paradise every day. That's what I say. So That's let's right. get into a couple things that Timmy touched on. First of all, a trade. And if there is going to be a trade with losing Shell, that middle linebacker situation is a mess right now. It's a mess. Dotson, I don't know if you guys have heard. I'm sure you heard. Getting heated back to back days. And one was with Josh Allen, uh, rumors that he allegedly, and I'm not going to say that he did it because I didn't see it. I didn't see any film. I'm just hearing what other people are saying. Swung his helmet. Um, then he got heated with uh, Dawkins. And then apparently someone said that it's this has been going on all camp. And obviously he didn't play a lot of snaps in the preseason game, but didn't look good for the few snaps that he did play. And with Bernard now, being injured by the way he was working on the sidelines, which is good, but he's so injury prone, not only through his college career. Now we've seen it here. So big concerns there often uh, the, the um, tackle situation. I could see a trade for either one of those positions, or do you think we'll have some, somebody, some veteran that might get released um, at middle linebacker that we could pick up. And now I'm going to tell you who's the front runner for the middle linebacker right now with the team. It's going to be Klein. That's the only guy. I, I was just going to say, you're talking say aging, Wiley aging veteran. Klein. Forgotten veteran. Is yes. the only guy I feel comfortable with based on what I'm seeing right now. So, Jake, I mean, your thoughts, man. Well, you know my thoughts. I feel very comfortable with Dorian Williams in that position. Yes. And he proved it last week. You look at the tape, man. I mean, he was, he was doing things out there that everyone else couldn't do. Um, so, I'm very impressed already. I know it's going to take him some time to learn the defense, but this is where – you get all those kinks out. Let him play a full game. Let him play a full half. I mean, geez, it's it's the greatest thing you can do for the guy. Let him play alongside Matt Milano a little bit too. Like, get him used to that. I think uh, it only makes sense right now, especially you got these guys that are all banged up. Let them get in there and play and get the, you know, get the nerves out a little bit. Learn the defense. Like, if he makes a mistake, it's okay. It's preseason right now. You don't want it to happen during the regular season. So I think you got to get him as much playing time as possible because that's where he's going to end up. I'm telling you right now, and it's inevitable because whether it's an injury or, 
You know, maybe it's these guys being overly aggressive and committing stupid penalties. I think Dorian Williams is too good of a football player to not be on the football field, plain and simple. And I'll say that every single show until I'm blue in the face. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they almost have to give him a chance right now. They almost yeah. have to. With Bernard injured, I'm not even sure uh, Bernard's going to play this weekend as well. I mean, he is working on the sidelines, but it's a hamstring injury. And that just happened to him last week. Is you know, Timmy, you probably know more about hammies than I do because you're working out all the time. But, you know, the hamstring yeah. injury is something. He knows a something. few things about hamstrings. Yeah, did he? Okay, we got stories there, too. <laughs> <laughs> what you... I may have finished the race with a torn hamstring. So oh, <laughs> He did, literally. He finished a race with a torn hamstring. Oh, my Nuts. goodness. <laughs> so they're no joke. And uh, so and let me ask you, uh, Timmy, I mean, you talked about these trades. If you're going to make a trade, who is that trade? bait that you're throwing out there i know a lot of talk has been about boogie being that trade bait but now you're talking a corner possibly we are kind of loaded in that corner position but who do you think that's trade bait is and what position concerns you the most yeah so kind of go back to tyrell dotson um a little bit my i don't have too much of a concern with him right now um how long has he been on the team for almost five years right five years and yeah. So he hasn't really seen the field for five years. And probably that last game was kind of like his first live game action, starting as a middle linebacker in a long time. So, yeah, I'm going to give him the benefit of a doubt. Let's see how it goes this next week. If he's still looking bad, still looking lost out there, then it's time to hit the panic button. Um, I do think when Jake is talking about Dorian Williams, he's going to be that one guy in every draft class where the Bills are kind of going to hold him back. Um I don't think we're going to see much from him this season, to be totally honest with you. I know it stinks to hear that. I definitely want to see him out there. He's flying out there, making hits. But he's um, – I feel like he's going to be one of those guys that they're going to hold back, and Bills fans are going to be screaming to the high heavens in the middle of the season, asking why it's not on the field. But when it comes to, like, who's our trade guy going to be, I think it's between either A.J. Epinesa or Bookie Batchum. Those are the two guys I'm looking at right now. Um a lot of people were pointing out that you didn't really hear AJ's name uh, last preseason game, which, you know, it's kind of well, tough. He started, he started the game, didn't he? AJ Epinesa? Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't make any plays is what the people are trying right. to say. Right. And right. it's kind of hard because they had an interview with him a couple of weeks ago where he said the percentage to make a sack, if you're to be actually top tier in making sacks, um, you have to be getting a sack 2% of the time. The whole entire season. That's, that's TJ Watt. That's stat. Nick Bosa. Yeah. So that's really – it's kind of hard to stand out when sacks are going to be a thing that people are going to be noticing and maybe not the little things where you're containing the run game or you're just, you know, hurrying up the quarterback. But then also you see Booker Basham and he made some plays. He had a sack last game. He kind of stood out. So what's standing out on tape? Whose value is going to be a little bit higher? So I think it's really going to be between those twos. And if anything, when it comes to cornerback, obviously you're not going to give up on Kyrie Elam. You know, Dane Jackson looks like he's going to be the starter going into the season. Maybe Christian Benford. Maybe he's going to be that little bit of trade bait that can be thrown out Ooh. there just because wow. you see. I don't know. Uh, wow. Timmy. Bring just because you've seen, you're seeing Perfect. the emergence of Saran Neal out there too. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't see Benford as a safety in this um, defense. To be totally honest with you, I know a lot of people are trying to say he's going to be a safety in the future. But you got Demar Hamlin. You have Rap, who you're going to be thinking they might be signing long term after this season. Yeah. And then uh -oh. you know, we lost him. There we go. He's back. There he is. Right. You're back. Um, but like I said, you're going to have Ta Taylor Rap, who's kind of having this audition season. So maybe next year he's going to be signed long term to the team. Um. Then you also have Saran Neal that they're putting out in safety. And you have Cam Lewis. Like, where are you going to fit Christian Benford into the the safety, you know, tryouts for them as true. well? Yeah. So, if you're going to have extra guys and Christian Benford's kind of showing that he could play and be a starter in a defense, maybe a team might be able to pay a little bit more than what we drafted for him and maybe swing us either a tackle or a middle linebacker or somebody out there for that. So. Those are the three guys I'm kind of looking at right now. Those are probably the most uh, valuable when it comes to trades uh, this, you know, kind of preseason. So let me ask you, another guy that was out on the field a lot was uh, Saran Neal, who you talked about. I know that's Jake's, one of Jake's uh, favorite players. I mean, we're hearing a lot of good things. We saw a lot, I think we saw some pretty good things in the first preseason game. 
Mm-hmm. Is he being auditioned at all, Jake? I mean, why is he on the field so much? Why was he playing so many snaps? Yeah. That's um, quite a bit. Yeah, no, he, he really did play a lot of snaps. I, I think there's a way that maybe they're trying to do that as well. He's uh the nice thing with Saran Neal is he's definitely a, a special teams guy as well. He's he's special teams ace, if you will. So I'm not sure how much value he brings in that sense, but I do think if you're another team looking at him, you could plug him in at nickel or you could potentially play him at safety because he's got the size for that too. And he's he's more of like an old school thumper, which I am all about, you know. Um so maybe it is, you know, maybe it is a little audition for Saraniel. I don't know. I just I don't see him getting traded in my mind. I feel like the the Bills are really big, obviously, still on special teams. They're not gonna just get rid of a guy that has been a big contributor over the last few years so easily. So I, I feel like if you're gonna trade a guy, it's gonna be someone like Boogie Basham, who is essentially a part of a you know, just a, a big amount of depth that we can't just hold on to, you know a guy that's still offering value. There was a rumor floated around a couple weeks ago that we we're going to trade Boogie Basham for Devin Duvernay. Yeah. But since we ended up signing Andy Isabella, I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Um, then there's a, a rumor that I just heard from Brett from Go Bill's podcast. He was saying that there's a, a chance that we trade a fifth rounder for Kelvin Beecham, which I'm not sure where he was getting that info from either. But um that could be interesting at the right tackle position, bring in some competition for Spencer Brown. I was going back and forth with Sean about this a little bit, though, too, because he said, well, if that's the case, you could have used a, a draft pick on a right tackle. We could have drafted Dewan Jones, you know, but instead we elect to go and sign an undrafted free agent in Richard Garage, which I thought he played very well last week. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Richard mm-hmm. Garage. His stock is way up. And obviously playing alongside his teammate, Osiris Torrance, that could be great, you know. Um, so... I don't know. I, I, you know, I think there's a lot of different things you could do. If you're going to trade anyone, though, I have a feeling it's going to be one other defensive lineman. Let me ask you. Just, um, it's not going to happen. But if you had to choose between Saran, Saran, is it Saran or Saran? What is he like? I, believe, I think it's Saran. I've called him. I've called them both. I, I so know. many I hear times. You say both. All right. If it's yeah. Saran or Benford, who are you parting with if you have to choose? Saran Neal. Yeah. Yeah. That hurts me to say that too, because I, I really do like him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, name I a Bills player Jake does not like Jake name <laughs> one right now off the top of your head who's your least favorite Bills player right now oh don't do that to me <laughs> he, he can't say that I just love channel. them all man I, if I could keep them all I would he, you know he signed I, the contract he cannot say that on this channel right now <laughs> yeah actually I'm, I'm kind of affiliated with the Bills so I'm not allowed to slander them at all <laughs> we got no one. I'll give an honest assessment I will I, you know I just the thing is I love everyone I'm like Larry Fitzgerald too so if you chirp me I'll just congratulate you so keep coming with them in the comments if you'd like uh, we've had a couple people come at me a little bit saying I'm a homer I'm biased this that and other although I could probably name thousands more players from their team that have ever played for their team than they could but uh <laughs> that's neither here nor there i'm not going to get fired up right now but um you know i want to I mean. say uh thank you from tommy from mafia sports report he's at work he's going to catch us a little bit later thank you tommy appreciate you and then sean's oh, got yeah, a question tommy. for you guys he says what does brown have to do to have you all in on him as our future i just want to see some consistency You know, I just feel like there's too much up and down with him. Like one game, he'll play really well. And then the next game, he'll look like a totally different player, like total opposite direction where he doesn't even look like he can play football, you know? So I just want a consistent, even if he's middle of the pack, like Sean said, if he finishes like 40 out of 75 instead of 75 out of 75 for the PFF grade, that would be great. And I don't, you know, obviously for me, I don't put a ton of stock in a PFF, but there is something to be said about it. If you're ranked 75 out of 75 for starting right tackles that have played in a season, it's not a good thing. You might need to evaluate what's going on there. Actually, I think it was 77 out of 75. So he was actually behind backups even. Pretty yes. crazy. So, I mean, guys, I feel like we're in the tackle position. We're, we're in a bit of hurt right now, right? So if yeah. Dawkins or Brown goes down, I mean, who's who's – Who's up next? Who's Ryan next Vandermark. I thought he played actually yeah. a pretty good game last no, week. Too. Ryan on. Vandermark and come Richard on. Garage stock up. By All right, the way, let's, let's but just say this. Realistically. <laughs> Vandermark played okay. At, he played good at the left tackle. You need him on yeah. the right tackle? He was horrible. Mm-hmm. He was horrible. And I know, you know, 
Sean corrected me, but depending on where he was playing, his splits, good on the left side, bad on the right side. So if you need him yeah, for a right yeah. tackle, Spencer Brown goes down. Let's just say this. Let's say Spencer gets dinged up. Who are you bringing in? Questenberry? Ooh. We're in trouble, man. We're in trouble. Yeah, I mean, Tommy Doyle, I mean, we thought he almost died again. I mean, we thought he tore his ACL for a third yeah. straight time. Poor it guy. did not look good. Uh, he got bullied a little bit, and I think he's going to take some time to, to get back to full strength, and I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely worried. I think we are in trouble there. That is definitely the most eye-opening position right now. I would say left tackle, too, if you look at it just in terms of depth. I mean, David Questenberry could handle it, but other than that, I don't know. And I've heard we've been working out some guys, um, but not too many big-name players, and I don't think any yeah. of them were really NFL vets. The one guy was from the XFL. Yeah, oh, I saw that time with us. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. Yeah, let me bring up who we have right now as tackles just to kind of go what, what our options are currently. So we got Richard Garage, which, you know, Jake and I yep. would love for a multitude of reasons. He looked good. He played with Torrance last year. And, of course, oh, Gor Gorilla mm, Garage, who was a sponsor on our uh, show last year and, of course, did Jake's flooring. Would love to have him. Man, we'd be able to get uh, – Gorilla Garage, the sponsors again with some connection with with uh, Richard Garage. So um, here's what we got: Richard Garage, Questenberry, Alec Anderson, Deion Dawkins, Ryan Van Demark, Tommy Doyle, Spencer Brown. I mean, guys, mm. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, that's uh... yeah. I just don't think that guy's on the roster right now. I think they're going to be picking him up at the you know roster cut day. They're just going to get some veteran guy to come in here and just, you know, kind of plug plug a hole. I feel like what right tackle has been for the past couple of seasons and even, you know, left guard is just find a guy, plug him in there and hope he kind of works. So, you know, that's kind of been the whole um, deal with our offensive line since Bean's been around, you know, just find some guys, plug them in there, pray that it works. So hopefully the next couple of seasons, you know, we're going to be drafting guys high. But right now, this is kind of the story. Sarah, thank you so much. So glad to find thank this stream. We appreciate you. Heck um, yeah. Could Bates play tackle? I mean, that's that's you where can. we are. Like, if, if these guys right got injured, I'm putting Bates in right now. Yeah, honest, that's how I he really started am. his career. Yeah. yeah, yeah, honestly, he's got the size 40, 6'5". You know, I think he can handle it. But I don't know. I don't know. It is uh, certainly eye-opening, to say the least. Yeah, why don't you take uh, um, Sarah's question here? I believe he is, actually. If you look at... You're looking at our lads. He is technically. Um, I don't know. He's got to show a little more too, because between him and Spencer yeah. Brown, man, I mean, they have been the walking wounded lately. So, yeah, it's uh, it, it was tough to watch Tommy Doyle the other day. But again, I mean, this is his first game action in so long. Mm -hmm. He's torn his ACL twice now, and uh, you know, I thought it was going to happen a third time there. Thank God it didn't, and he's okay. Um, so I think it's going to take him some time to. There is, a, there is such a difference between just doing workouts on the side and doing team drills compared to full game action against another opponent. So it's going to take some time with that. Um, don't give up hope just yet, but certainly uh, be aware of what's going on at that position right now because it is it is probably by far our weakest position right now on the team. I'm going to even put that behind middle linebacker. Yeah. Did, did you hear any – either of you hear why Shell's retiring? Was there anything that came out? about that i haven't heard anything i mean what is he he's 31 gonna be 32 this year yeah um yeah basically just, he just he just felt like he couldn't bring it anymore every day yeah. which i respect that because you know what sometimes you think you you know what you're getting into and you do it for so long and it's not like he did it in the middle of a half you know <laughs> in a regular season yeah. game which again is yeah. the most bizarre retirement i've ever seen in my entire life and listen i love monte davis i think he was a hell of a player uh, you know time and place man like wait until after the game at least holy smokes um so i you know yeah. it sucks because it is veteran depth there and not saying he was like the greatest option or anything like that but he certainly would have been more of a safe blanket compared to what we have now and then Sarah says, on the bright side, our line looks a lot better than the Jets. Yeah. That no, was, for sure I mean, it does. That was yeah. a big question mark for them. For, with you know, with everything they've added, it didn't feel like they uh, secured that that offensive line. So definitely something for them to be dealing with. Dorsey, can you explain? What did he say here? She, she said, Dorsey made kind of a cryptic comment. I th Let's Was see. this regarding the uh, the quarterbacks? Talking Setting about how. Well, what about that? 
when his heart isn't in it or something. Hmm, okay. I didn't hear that actually. Well, I did. Uh, I did hear about what he talked about with the the quarterbacks because everyone's on the Matt Barkley train right now. Bitcoin the controversy. Barkley, the big QB two man. Yeah. The greatest preseason quarterback to ever live. Fourteen for fifteen, a buck seventy two, and two cutters. Are you kidding me right now? Put this guy <laughs> in the Hall of Fame. I love I love Matt Barkley so much. I think he belongs in Buffalo. He knows he's going to be in Buffalo, whether it's on the practice squad or as QB two. So I think that's the beauty of all this. You know, um, it's There's been no a debate way. on. There's been a debate on WGR about this. Would you rather have Matt Barkley no. as your QB two and then Kyle Allen risk him of being on the practice squad? Because I think another team picks no. him up just based on his recent starting experience. Um, or you keep Kyle Allen at QB two and then have Matt Barkley as your practice squad guy. And remember, guys, this year you can actually have three active quarterbacks. So if something happens, and they won't count for an active roster spot too, that third quarterback. I, I heard they do. So – we, oh really? I think you fa- have to delegate to it. That. It's basically if a freak thing happens or if there's an injury that occurs like prior to game time before you have to get your final roster in, I think. I'll have to clarify that yeah, rule, well, but I know you check can that. Yeah. I, I think yeah. somebody said that on the uh podcast with uh Tommy when I was on it and he said you have to that person has to be part of your uh, your 53 man roster. So Okay. Let's check that out. Let's just uh, well, we'll, part we'll of fact the, check that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sean, you're out there. Matt Barkley throws ducks. He throws ducks. He, he have you? Did you see him throwing the ball? No, I, I mean, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. There is no Touch speed though. to him at all. They're all Touch, floaters. Jimmy. No, you play against the starters, you're getting picked off. I'll take Kyle Allen <laughs> every day over Matt Barkley. I'm sorry. It's yeah. fun that Matt Barkley's Kyle having his hey, payday right now. Yeah, and I understand. Yeah. I totally get it. Like Matt Barkley, of course, looks a lot more comfortable in the offense. He's been with this team for so many years now, right? So he understands the offense. Kyle Allen, I mean, he looked a little lost at times, but also he wasn't getting a ton of help either. I mean, the offensive line didn't give him a whole ton of yeah. time. And um, he's playing with backup receivers, you know, guys that he hasn't played with before. So give him a break. Remember last year, Case Keenum? Same thing happened with him. He ended mm-hmm. up being our quarterback too as well. So, yeah. I mean – Kyle Allen, I mean, he had like a 54 point something rating, but let's let's look back a little bit. So he had a drop pass. He had he had that pick six, which really that's not his fault. I'm not putting that on him. Shavers mm-hmm. right off his hands. I mean, you guys know yeah. the rule. If it hits you in the hands, man, you gotta catch it. I don't care if it's that's a little push-ups. behind you. You yeah. gotta catch that ball. Yeah. Um and then let's see here. What is the question I had for you guys? So they, it's interesting because they both are paid about the same. Right, they're both a little over 1.2 million dollars. They're both the same as far as a dead cap hit. So I was surprised to see that. Like I would have expected Kyle Allen to be paid a, a bit more. Um, yeah. I guess Barkley's earned that over his uh, with his time. Um, but interesting. But yeah, I'm I'm not out on Allen yet. And if I had to choose right now, I mean, he did make that one play where he was able to roll out to the right, kind of a little like Josh Allen esque. Right? He was. Did you see that play? I did see actually that. Able to extend it. I think he ran for the first down in that play. So let's see him again. I mean, what do you expect this week? How much, um, who do you, who's going to start and who do you think is follows Josh? Cause will that be a telling tale right there? If Barkley comes in after Josh or if Allen, I think it's going to be, Josh is going to start the game maybe for a drive or two. And then, I think they're going to go back to Kyle Allen, and Kyle Allen's going to play the majority of the game. Just because, like everyone was saying, he's learning the offense right now. He's still trying to figure things out. So, you know, try to give him as much time as as, as you can with that offense. We already know what Matt Barkley can do. Like I said, yeah. he throws ducks. He's not a strong quarterback. He's kind of just – he's got, he's a nice – he's a guy – he's a nice locker room guy. He's a guy I'm not going to tolerate any more Matt Barkley hate. Yeah. <laughs> I was a USC fan of Matt Barkley, but – yeah. His arm is really not that strong, and we've seen him in the season two when he played. He's, he's he doesn't really have an NFL caliber arm right now. Where you're coming from, Josh Allen to Matt Barkley, like you're gonna have something a little bit closer when it comes to throwing that ball. So, no, I think we're gonna see a lot of Kyle Allen this next game. I think we're gonna see him into deep into the third quarter and possibly even the fourth, and then we're gonna see a little bit of Matt at the end. We already know what Matt does. I think we it's time to have the Kyle Allen show right now. A real test would be having Barkley with the ones for a little bit, right? Because most of that was against third, third stringer, second half. Right. Um, let's see. Ben's out there. Good to see you, Ben. 
He there says, he is. Uh, I'd take Barkley. We're screwed either way if Allen goes down. Barkley That's a great has point. The and presence for a game yeah. plan. And again, I mean, if if we if Allen was out three to four games, you know, what is it you want to see? You want at least your backup quarterback to get you half two or two or more wins in that situation. Um, you know, they can change the game plan. I think we have a better offensive line. I think the running game could actually help that out. And a lot of dump offs, right? Uh, use Cook. Um, like you were saying earlier on, um, Timmy, you know, do those, take those shorter routes, which we didn't use. And if Barkley can't throw the ball far, he's forced to take those shorter routes. Of yeah. course, defenses will key on that a little bit. And let's see here. What do we got? Sarah's saying, if he can run, it might be worth it to keep him just for that. I've been saying, and been saying we should get our own Taysom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to have a gadget guy like that, you know, um, we did a few years back, you know, if you remember Logan Thomas, and then he turned into a tight end, actually did pretty damn well for the Washington R words at slash Washington football team slash Washington commanders. He's still there. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, actually, you know, it would be kind of interesting to have a guy like that. Um, otherwise, I think I agree with Timmy on this one. I will say, I think Kyle Allen probably gets a majority of this game. They got to give him another shot and uh, get him used to this offense a little bit, get him more reps. It's only preseason. Don't put too much stock into it. Obviously, if he is looking like he can't play football at all and he's throwing yeah. directly to the defense every single play, then there's a big difference. But, yeah, I I, I don't think it's anything to be too concerned about. Um, I am not I'm not ready to 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 sound the alarm or anything like that. And honestly, like I said, Matt Barkley is still going to be a practice squad quarterback, even if he isn't quarterback, too. So he's going to be on this team in some capacity. Yeah. It's got to happen. I feel like Joe Webb. Good maybe call, I read man. this wrong. Um, I think I read today that in um, with the press, Dorsey was saying that this was a competition still between those two guys. He did say that. He hasn't alluded to who's going to be actual quarterback two, uh, but yeah, he basically said, "Yeah, it's open competition." Which any coach is going to say that, of course. But um, yeah, it might be. It might be a lot closer than people think. You know, it, it really might be. And the coaches probably want to see what they got there. And then uh, Ben's calling you out, man. He says, come on, James. Yeah, he said Joe Webb. I, I agree. I mean, Joe Webb, man. He, uh, <laughs> If you remember that Indianapolis game in the snow, absolutely killed it for us. Shady actually really killed it for us, but he was able to manage <laughs> that that game. You know, he did a really nice job. Hey, if a, if a veteran frees up uh, when they when the cuts come, I mean, we're only paying – We're only, both of them have a dead cap of 300000 or less. That's not not losing much. If so, yeah. if there is a veteran that frees up, why not? If we can get him on a one year deal similar to what we got Mitch for, um, I'm all for it. But we'll have to wait and see. What else did you want to? So, Timmy, did we get through your takes? Because I know Jake might have some, but what else you got? What are you bringing? You're bringing the hot <laughs> stuff tonight, man. Oh, man. I think, I think I've done enough. You know, done enough done damage. Enough. Matt done Barkley enough. throws ducks. Khalil <laughs> Secure, you know. I just want to get people riled up. You know, let's get some people get in the comments right now just throwing some stuff at me. But <laughs> throw that heat. But, um, no, that's pretty much all I have. The only other question that I had for just fan-wise is, you know, do you guys have any game day superstitions at all? Ooh. Game day superstitions. Uh, um, like, I don't wear any Bills game on Bills game day. Yeah, you don't. Uh, I will wear the same jersey until there's a loss. Like, I'll wear that. I'm going to start with the Reggie Gilliam jersey, and the second the Bills lose a game, I'm taking it off, and I'll put a different one on. For me, it, you know, it involves my kids. might sound a little weird, but back in the 90s, my daughter was like, during those Super Bowls, she's like, I don't know, two or three years old. I'd give a little, you know, rub of the head, baby luck, I call it, baby luck. Oh, and now yeah. when my son's upstairs, yeah. my 10-year-old, I have him close by. I'm rubbing it. He's like, Dad, what are you doing? I'm like, this is a thing, man. It brings us luck. Trust me. <laughs> it didn't help that much during the 90s, those Super Bowls, but that was my thing. Other than that, I don't really have any other real superstitions at all. I'm not afraid to wear my gear. Mm, nah, nothing, nothing really. Timmy would agree with what Tony on our channel has to say. Tony says that wearing jerseys is for – betas he said it's a beta <laughs> move you're wearing another man's jersey another man another man's name on the name of on the back of your, uh, your right. shirt that you're wearing i don't know i you know i listen i get it but also tony 
these are men that are doing things that I can't do. So listen, a true alpha can admit when he's Jake a also has a tr- Jake also has a true track record for uh, all his Bills jerseys that he orders as well. Oh, you know, I do. He, it's he bad. usually brings a bad luck. He brings yeah. a bad luck. <laughs> I mean, while well, you talk about just normal jerseys in general, I mean, we're talking, we go back to the Michael Vick days, right? So I get a jersey of Michael Vick, right? He gets indicted for dogfighting. I'm like, okay, great. This is so I had a ton of Michael Vick gear. I kind of had to take it down on my wall. I didn't want people judging me saying, you love dogfighting. No, I'm not that guy. Then I buy a Plexico Burris jersey. Not just one. I buy one on the Steelers, and then I get one of him on the Giants. Shoots himself. Goes to jail. You know, gets indicted because he didn't have a license for the gun. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is insane. Next, I get a Darren Sharper jersey. One on the Vikings, one on the Saints. Just when I think I'm good, right? This guy's on NFL Network, looks all buttoned up. Comes out that he's, like, being indicted for, like, Sexual assault. We, know, we like, all know what happened. Before. Yeah, yeah, right. So I'm like, what is going on here? This is insane. <laughs> and just when I think I'm really safe, right? So Todd Heap, and and this is like not even. This is totally different, but still, it's like in the news again, right? So he ends up, unfortunately, he ran over his daughter. It's like, oh my gosh! Like every jersey I get, like something bad happens with that player. And then last year, Matt Ariza, I can't get away from it, man. So. Me and Mike were joking about it too. He's like, just don't get like you cannot get like an impact player's jersey anymore because you're <laughs> gonna screw them over some way, shape, or form. Like you're gonna bring bad luck on them. So he also I don't know. say his favorite rookie of the class either. His favorite rookie of the class either, like Zach Moss or Harry mm, Phillips, you know. That too. Phillips bro tore his ACL. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that happened Zach as well. Zach Moss, same yeah. thing, yeah. Unbelievable. And before man. I throw it to Jake, we didn't since our last show, Jake, we haven't had a chance to talk about the signings that happened with Dalvin Cook going to the Jets and with Ezekiel Elliott going to the Patriots. So Timmy, let me throw it to you because you're full of hot takes tonight. Is Dalvin Cook <laughs> take the Jets over the edge? I mean, should we just pack no. it in? Are we are we done so? What's going on? What do no. you think? I'm not afraid of the Jets. I'm we should not be afraid of the Jets. The Bills are the big dogs in the AFC East right now. They have to come they have to come play the Bills right now. So guess what? I don't care who you put on the Jets right now. You got a 38-year-old quarterback who's been just what is he he's been pedestrian last year. He, what did he do? He didn't carry the Green Bay Packers last year. They don't have an offensive line. Their defense was kind of mediocre. I know everyone's going on about Sauce Gardner, Quinn and Williams and all this stuff. Bills still played against them. We're going to have a better offense this year, too. I'm not afraid of the Jets at all. And you know what? The Patriots, when the Patriots are talking about their third-string quarterback getting playing time during the season, mm. that reminds me of the Buffalo Bills back during the drought when we were – Tool time. Who was that? Jeff Tool. You know, we're Tool just going time, after baby. everybody. But I was also thinking about – who was that Jets wide receiver that also played quarterback in the wild? Brad Smith. Actually, Remember that's another that? example of a game. That was to be a guy that yeah, they thought Brad Smith. Bills fans are like, he's going to bring us over the edge. And guess what? Okay. He lasted like a season and a half and he's gone. So I'm not afraid of the Patriots. You know what? Get yourself a quarterback first and then you can start talking. Jets, you know, guess what? You haven't shown anything yet. That's great. You got Sauce Gardner. You got Garrett William, Garrett Wilson, or whatever the heck his name is. Yeah. You know what? Whatever Come the play the Bills first. Yeah, that's Garrett right. Garrett Wilson's wow. a dog. Do not disrespect Garrett wow. Wilson. But, like but I not, they still have to go through the Dolphins, too. The yeah, Dolphins right. had two 1,000-yard right. 1, receivers. They got Vic Fangio as their defensive coordinator right now, too. I'm more afraid of the Dolphins than I am afraid of the Jets. That's I am as sure. well. I am with you on and that. And then the Patriots are going to be a speed bump right now. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think oh, Del- yeah, baby. I, I think Delvin Cook is, you know, what does Rodgers like to do? What did he do last year with his running backs? A lot of screen plays. So you get Delvin Cook into mm-hmm. the open space. He's a game changer. That dude can take – he did it to us. He took it to the house. Changed the game last year uh, when the Bills were looking comfortable. And I think, you know, with Brees Hall, I, it, it's obviously a sign to me that Brees Hall might not be ready yet. And – what running back has been ready after an ACL tear their, their, their second year? Adrian Peterson's the only guy that comes to my mind. So, I don't know. I think Devin Cook definitely helps the situation. Whether you know They don't have a great offensive line, so I don't really worry about him running too much. But, man, get the guy out with a little screen ball, screen pass. Watch out. I be trolling's back. I be trolling 46. <laughs> I, Timmy's back. Timmy is fired up. Timmy is fired up. I mean, he got Timmy a little. Timmy is fired up. 
he got a little exposure to the podcast a few weeks ago. He's like, bring me on. I got a lot of hot takes tonight. I was a little quiet last time, but showing my true self tonight. We need that. <laughs> it brings some energy, man. You know, Timmy gets it. it going a little bit. Yeah. We should have a, a Timmy's Corner or something. And oh, yeah. We'll have our own all riled up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love it. That's a great idea. Uh, <laughs> Red, white, and Bills says I'm more afraid of the Bills than any other team. Yeah. That's no, that's, that's very true. well said, Sean. I think we beat ourselves more than any other team has really beaten us. I've never felt like we were totally dominated by another team outside of maybe that Bengals loss in the divisional round. But even so, like there are things that we did that we just continued to shoot ourselves in the foot. It's like not making adjustments, like playing seven yards off the ball when you have one yard to get for a first down. Like there's just so yeah. many things that added up. And then when you're already at a disadvantage and you play a good team, you're going to lose that matchup every single time it's just not gonna it's not gonna work out i love this timmy's oh, corner brought yeah. to you by miller light yes so by the way uh shout out to matthew it was his bachelor party mike we went to pittsburgh with with matt and a couple other guys and boy we tore it up down there and we wore our bills shirts i have a nice bills hawaiian shirt i will wear it on this podcast at some point <laughs> and we went on this pittsburgh pontoon boat the best part was we run into a bachelorette party and guess what half the bachelorette our Bills fans, they're from Bradford, PA. Nice. They all love the Bills, you know, so it was kind of cool. We got a nice little picture with the Bachelor and Bachelorette. You know, she was saying, go Bills in the picture. It was freaking incredible. What a moment. Nice. So, Jake, let me throw it to you. I mean, Timmy's giving us some hot takes. What do you, what do you want to talk about tonight, man? I wanted to – well, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about, obviously, the quarterback two situation, but we covered that. Um, Gabe Davis is shaken up again. I'm not too concerned about it, but I did see it was just general soreness, I guess. So maybe they're just holding them out and just, you know, letting them take a little veterans rest, if you will. Um, let's see. There were a couple trades, you know, we wanted to talk about too, uh, but we already talked about those. I wanted to ask Timmy some trivia questions, but I'm going to wait until the end for that one. Um, we mainly, we pretty much covered. I, I got a couple things. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot I just me. got a couple more things. So running back situation, Damian Harris, as I say right there down in the ticker, uh, he's back at practice, um, injury prone. But right now, if we know Cook is the main guy, and Cook is that guy, Timmy, in your opinion, is Murray running back number two or is Harris number two if he's able to play next week in the following uh, preseason game? Or who knows, maybe they just played safe with him. But who's running back number two for you? I would kind of like to see what Damian Harris does um, this upcoming yeah. preseason game. The big thing with Atavius Murray is, you know, he is older. He's 33 years old. So can he be your primary number two running back? Can you have him out there a, a lot? You know, especially when who knows what happens with James Cook. You know, will he come in and be your starter? That's going to be, you know, it's going to be a lot for a guy that age. So, you know, I think right now I'd like to see what Damian Harris does. I still kind of have him as our number two running back. I know he's not as good as pass catching compared to Latavius Murray and James Cook, but, you know, I kind of really, I don't know. I don't see this as, uh, this is a good problem to have. You mm -hmm. know, you have two experienced running backs. Both were starters at one point in the league. One is a touchdown hawk. I'm just mm -hmm. saying, Latavius Murray, I used to curse him out on Sundays just because he would take <laughs> – I had Alvin Kamara, Alvin Kamara, and he would yeah. take every touchdown away from me. But I'm glad he's on our team now. I'm glad he's on the Bills. But, no, um, I kind of – I would like to see what Damian Harris does with his opportunity this, these next two weeks. But I kind of see him as number two still just because, you know, you don't want to put a lot of mileage on Latavius Murray. Kind of save him for the end of the season. Maybe, you know – let him be that big running back during the end of the season when it gets cold out and we're running the ball more. And, you know, you need those extra yards and he could be that guy. You know, let's not burn him out early in the season. I like that. that uh, that's a, a good take there. Jake, do you think he gets less than or more than 60% of the snap count? And that is um, Cook. Do you think he... Um, I was just going to... You yeah. read my mind because I was yeah. actually going to give you my prediction on that. So yeah. I think he's right at 60 on the season. 60% goes to James Cook. I'm going to say 30% goes to Damian Harris and the other 10% goes to Latavius Murray. Okay. I like that. The other thing I wanted to talk about is some of these UD, uh, UDFAs, uh, these mm -hmm. wide receivers. Yes. I mean, let oh, me yeah. go through, let me go through the receivers here right now, real quick on the roster. Currently Marcel Aitman, 
had a made good, a beautiful catch today, by the way. Game. Oh, and, yeah. and, and then he had a good game as well in preseason. Yeah. Ty- yeah. Tyrell Shavers been having a good camp. Saw a little mishaps uh, in preseason, but the dude is tall and lightning fast. 4.3. He runs a 4.3. You got Brian Thompson. I haven't heard much about him. Andy Isabella. Again, yeah, he, he's not making the team, Timmy. He's, no, <laughs> stop talking about him. Do you think Tyrell Shavers has a better shot at making the team than Andy Isabella, Mike? Dude, heck yeah. Heck okay. yeah. And why? Six foot four. 4.38. Mm-hmm. I want those he bigger. Looked, he looked good. He Come looked on, good. Dude. Seriously. Yeah. Justin Shorter. Uh, we haven't, you know, we kind of hear things much. about him in camp, but haven't seen much. I'm hoping yeah. this, uh, I, I think he's a lock for this, for the squad. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But hopefully we'll see him um, getting something from Josh. Uh, Deontay Hardy, Desmond Patman had a good game yeah. as well. Right. And here's the guy that seems to be, I mean, Keyshawn Johnson. I know. I mean, come on now, another guy over six foot, yeah. and he's catching everything thrown his way. I'm like, can we keep eight receivers this year somehow? <laughs> <laughs> right. Do, okay, so here's the yeah. question. Do any of these guys, now, first of all, do any of these guys, do you see right now how they're performing? If they were to go to the practice squad, do you see any of the ones I mentioned getting snacked? Um. Well, I, I do think... You look at guys that are veterans more as the guys that are going to get snagged and, and snatched up by another team. So, like, if Andy Isabella does not make this squad and he goes to the practice squad or if he clears waivers, I think there's a chance another team will take a shot on him just because he has experience playing in the league and he still offers return value at the very least. You know, so I think that's certainly a guy that you'll look at. Um, with the undrafted guys, another dude you did not mention, Mike, you were talking receivers, though, Jordan Mims. My boy, the next Raheem Blackshear, if you will. Uh, I am I'm a huge fan of him. He had a nice little catch in that game last week. Um been impressed with him. I liked I liked what I saw from him. So I think if you're talking undrafted free agents, you know, you look at the running back position too, with how injury prone it is, I feel like those guys are more likely to get picked up as uh, you know, right off the practice squad and, and sent to an active roster, more so even than receivers. Uh so I think that's definitely a guy to look at. Um, shoot, if Tyrell Shavers keeps this up, boy, he's going to be a problem. I mean, he was, he was handily, you know, basically manhandling these corners for the Colts. And I know the Colts corners aren't like the greatest in the world, but man, like he showed out the other day. I was very impressed with him. And I think he's got a, he's got a shot at playing in this league. Definitely. All right. So Jake, how many did you predict the, uh, we'd keep at wide receiver? How many wide receivers? Right now I'm going to say we keep seven. I think we do, just seven. because we're only going to keep three running backs. Yep. Okay, let's name off those seven. Okay. <sighs> Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, Deontay Hardy, Trent Sherfield, Justin Shorter, Khalil Shakir. You said that too quiet. Too quiet I was about to Jay. say, you, you said had that to think too about that quietly. for a second. I know, I know, I know. And then who's seven? Who's your seven? Do we keep do we keep a big bodied guy? Do we keep a, a six six four, six five guy instead of Andy Isabella? That's the real question because that's what I'm battling with Oof. right now. We don't you, have you a ton of size. Like... I love oh, Andy Isabella. I'm a believer. You guys are sounding like a chick on a dating app. That's all I'm going to say. Six feet or taller. <laughs> hey. Oh, that's good. That's I'm good. A, I'm Andy Isabel is 5'9". You got the 6'4", Tyrell Shavers. Yes. Oh, baby. Oof. Oh, listen. You're right, Timmy. Did you say shorter? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah shorter. Is... That would make okay. Pain. So, um, well, this is a good point, too. Look at Ben bringing this up. He says, we keep six. Kincaid is like a wide receiver. He's going to be used as a receiver. I 100% agree. By the way, he cooked Kyer Elam in practice today from what I've been hearing. So just love hearing stuff like that. I mean, don't love hearing that from an, uh, you know our first-round corner, but um, that's a good point, too. But I feel like there's just so much to go around. Let's, let's, we'll stick with Andy Isabella. I said he was going to make this team. He's going to make oh, this team. Oh, my goodness. Let's go. Come on. We're keeping both, though. Khalil and Short Andy Kings. Isabella. Going short with the Kings. Short Kings. You know what, though? Again, everyone thinks Khalil Shakir is not this big. He's six foot, 200 pounds, which isn't I know. nothing crazy, but it's not like it's not a small receiver by any means. Does taller receivers help Josh that much more? He can be a little off, a little high. 
they can elevate, get those passes. That's why I like them. Um, we saw what the three headed monster did to us with the, um, with the Bengals. I mean, yep. I, I want to simulate that a little bit. This I is, love Timmy's is... comment about sounding like a chick on a dating app. <laughs> My only guy is over six foot. That was pretty good. I like that. <laughs> All right. So that kind of covers um, pretty much everything I had. I mean, the channel, let us know if you have any questions. We'll answer those uh, for you right away. And um, Jake, I mean, you wanted to drop a few little trivia questions on Timmy. Yeah. Don't embarrass him too on. much. Here we go. Oof. All right, so Timmy, um, I got a couple for you here. One second. Let me just pull them up. Got them in my notes here. I These were questions, by the way, if you guys haven't checked it out on the uh, AFC East Summit channel, we did a trivia night, and it was fantastic. I think we were planning on doing one on this channel as well with those reps because they did a tremendous job. They knew their stuff. They came to play, and uh, there's Artie. Shout out to Artie. Um, but let me tell you something. These guys are very knowledgeable about their teams, and I think we got to do something like that on Nickel City Mafia's channel as well, which we will. Um, all right, Timmy, are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right, here we go. This Pro Bowl fullback led the Buffalo Bills in receptions in 2001 with 80. Led the team in catches. You're me off. You know this. You know this. I don't know this. I don't. You're love gonna be kicking yourself. As as you do. You're gonna be kicking yourself when you get the answer. When I get the answer. Yep. You're gonna get it. No. Oh. Ben, I know who ben it just is, put but... it in the comments. All right. You give up. Yeah, I give up. This man should be inducted into the Pro uh... Football Hall of Fame. Larry Centers unbelievable receiving fullback he was like a cheat code and you go back to the to the mid 90s when he was with the cardinals he had over 100 catches in a season he had 101 receptions are you kidding me the 99 the year after like it's crazy to think you know you look at where the fullback is now and where they were you know even 10 years ago even 20 years ago now it's like what a change man and i think listen we got a guy in reggie gilliam who is being slept on again but that's okay because every time he, he's in the game, something good happens. So, and if you want to count him as a running back, you know, that's okay because he is a super good athlete. He can play tight end, he can play H pack, he can play a little bit of running back. He can get out there and send a block, you know, be the lead blocker on a play. So, uh, I'm here for that. And listen, I don't want to go on too much of Reggie Gillian tan tangent here. So, I'm going to go on to the next question. Here we go. You'll get this one. This former Buffalo Bills player is notable for having sacked Tom Brady more than any other NFL player. Aaron Schobel. Aaron Schobel, one of the most underrated DNs in Buffalo Bills history. I believe he's second all time on the sack list in Bills history as well. Two time Pro Bowler with us, maybe two or three time Pro Bowler, something like that. But yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, here's Ben saying, I bring up Larry. Sen yeah, actually, Ben, I was. Um, I was actually in a bidding war for a Larry Center's Cardinals frame jersey, and I was going to put it in my office just because I talk about him all the time. I think it would have been great. It was a signed jersey. I put a bid on it for like 150 bucks. I ended up going for 179.99. I'm like, you got to be kidding! I didn't lose out on it by that much, you know. But <laughs> it would have been cool. All right, I got three more questions for you, Timmy. Wow. Oof. Yeah, this Only is good. And Timmy's what? He's one for uh, one for two. He's right one now, for right? two so far. He's one for two. All Mike, right. you can help out too if you'd like. You might know some of these. Maybe. You'll definitely know this one. What was the K Gun offense named after? Who was the the what player was the K Gun offense named after? This is actually a trivia question that Mike had for me. This is an easy one, but well, way back in the day. It's not who you think. No, it's not Jim Kelly. No. It was, after, it was after the Bengals quarterback, right? Nope. What? Oh, it originated on the Bengals, though, the cake on offense. It, it technically did. Yeah, the Bengals actually did have a version of it as well. But when you're talking strictly Bills, they called it the K gun offense. They named it after this focal point player. If phone you'd like to phone, phone a, friend. a friend. Phone a friend, Mike. Let's do this. <laughs> that would be Keith McKellar. Keith McKellar. Super athletic tight end. tight end. Yep. So it actually kind of went through him. So that was a trick question. That was a tough one. I'll, I'll give you 
yeah. you're gonna get this one. We're hitting. Sure. We're hitting the. We're two hours past my bedtime, boys. Yeah, so. it's okay. You're all right. You're right. Okay, <laughs> you're ready? You're gonna, you're, you'll definitely get this. This is one. for all the the hot bad takes that you had. Jake is embarrassing you now. Yeah, I'm punishing you right though. now. He likes to do this to people. That's right. He still doesn't remember where Taryn Johnson went to college. Though. I feel bad. I always get this wrong. It is Weber State, though. I'll never forget it. I would always say Arkansas State. I don't know what it was. Timmy would always ask me that one. All right, you ready for this one, Timmy? This is a good one. This is yeah. a good drought question. This player ran track in college at Pittsburgh State and was known as a bright spot on the Bills during the drought years. He was a two-time Pro Bowler and first-team All-Pro for the Bills. Think drought years. Arguably the best player on the team. Also ran track. Don't let it throw you off, though. Guy was a incredible athlete for the position that he played it's mormon brian mormon that is correct yeah and that's why you have never seen about. more fake punts in buffalo bills history than with brian <laughs> mormon because that guy could run man everyone remembers the uh, sean taylor hitting the pro bowl when the pro bowl yeah. mattered back in the day yeah. oh what a thing of beauty and he was fired up after that too freaking incredible all right we're gonna end it off on one of my favorite questions ready for this one we got this. This is you're gonna crush this one. Who is the Bills' all-time leader in kick return yards and kick return touchdowns? All time. All time. With Terrence McGee. Terrence McGee. That's correct. I love. That's twenty four. My that's favorite. Good question, guy, man. It's a good right. question, man. So Very good Bills player. Sixty percent. That's a good score in the trivia. Five questions. Heck yeah. Nice. Good stuff. Well, listen. I think that wraps it up. Uh, we're a little over an hour, right? I mean, that's just short for us guys. Um, again, reminder, if you want to get into that Madden 24, leave a comment after the show, put the word Madden in your sentence or just the word Madden. It's fine. Um, if you're new to our channel, I haven't asked this, but, uh, please like comment and drop a nickel on that subscribe button. I see a lot of folks out there today, so we appreciate you. I have seen, I got to come up with a different way of saying, I appreciate you because I say that a lot. I did, I did, <laughs> That's I did okay. A, I did a video, right? I just did a video when Jake, you know, Jake's is, Jake has been not present lately. He hasn't been very present for the show. So I'm having to, you know, take on the stuff on my shoulders here. And I did a little, did a little video and then I rewatched it. And I'm like, damn, I say, I appreciate you a lot. And let me tell you, I cut out about five or six. I appreciate you because I post edited <laughs> it after I did the video. So, but we really do appreciate you. I say that and uh, we'd love to give back. So if you have a son, you have a grandchild. Just it's come in hot you. with the, I love you. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> put in some Madden right there. <laughs> it, has to be, it has to be in the comments, not in the live chat. I be trolling. Just like, you yeah, know. come on, Maddie. Pay come attention. On. All right. That's it. I mean, thank too. you guys. It's good to see you back, Timmy. I mean, anytime for you, buddy. We'll take the pickup. We'll get in this chromed pickup. Drive it up to Maine anytime you want us to. We appreciate you, man. Heck yeah. Yeah, I need some uh, help up here going against these Pats fans and trying to bring them back down to earth. Like, <laughs> that's the past. Hey, hey, Brady's gone. Belichick's he's not doing anything <laughs> right now. So, you know what? Help me up here. I need some backup. <laughs> hey, quick score predictions, fellas. Before the game on on Saturday, Saturday Ooh, at six thirty p.m. By, didn't by the really way, really talk about that. Yeah, we kind of, you know, score predictions. I mean, I don't know. I don't really get into the score predictions in in preseason, Jake. I don't even care if we lose. I just want to see some guys out there uh, earning their spots and uh, making progress. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. always sweeter after a win, and the Bills. I believe it was last year they had a thirteen game winning streak in the preseason that got snapped in the last game against the Panthers. So. We're back on that one-game winning streak. So I think we're winning this one. Listen, the Steelers, I, I love what I saw from George Pickens. You know, he took it to the house the other day. Um, but we always played pretty well against them in the preseason. And actually, the last time we played the Steelers, we won 38-3. to Absolutely destroyed them. So I'm going to say I'm gonna say Go Bills come out with another victory. But it's going to be a close one, 24-21 Bills. It's going to be a hard-fought oh. one. We're going to see your guy, Kenny Two 20, Gloves. 20. Is that what you call him? Kenny Two Gloves. Yeah, Kenny yeah. Two call Gloves Pickett. And listen, I think the Steelers are a dark horse team this yeah. year in the regular season. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people are sleeping on them. Everyone's talking about, you know, the Ravens. They got Lamar back. They got Odell, you know, and the Browns even with Deshaun Watson and Nick Chubb. And yeah, I just, I feel like the uh, the Steelers are being slept on heavily right now. I hear you. All right. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate you, Jake and Timmy. Let's get out of here. Go Bills.